teams are slowly finding their way into the game. But, um, I suppose Finstack. They're going to be the favorites going into this one. In my opinion, yes. Finstack are going to be the favorites. They have been around the scene individually for a very long time. They have yeah. a good number of pro players behind them. It's going to be very hard to dethrone the stack in this one. However, it's not impossible. It's going to be some very interesting games today. Nuclear Gandhi have proven that they can take games. They've proven that they can fight back. And in all honesty, I look forward to seeing what they can present in this game. Yeah, it should be interesting. Um, as for the opposing side, Emma Whisper is probably their best player. And um, he had a bit of a rough time yesterday. Indeed. Especially... The game against uh, Veni Vidivici, they really did not give him a good time. He was playing the uh, center, I believe. He was playing the center war runner, and he got completely shut down in the yep. early game. It was it was not very fun at all for him. Yeah, I was talking to uh, Nota about that this morning, and yeah, he was he was saying that uh, more or less their their idea was to just shut him down and uh, hopefully. The team morale will fall with them. So, uh, playing the mind games aspect of Dota, then. Yeah. Not un un <laughs> uh, uncommon, actually. It, it's surprising how much a few deaths can affect a team, especially if it is the captain of the team. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> well, for Finstack, who would you? Who do you think you'd target if you need to knock them down a peg? Who would I target? Who drafts for Finstack? Is it Jerex? It's Jerex, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, and he's known to be fairly emotional, actually. Uh, he doesn't really have that quite that reputation uh, outwardly, but within the scene, he's known to be fairly, fairly emotional. I would probably sit on Jerex, try to disrupt his rhythm in the game, his flow, and yep. maybe if he's if he's drafting, surprise him with something. At least that would be my logic going into this. You'd yeah. You want to keep Jerex off guard. And if you can force Jerex to tilt, that's, in my opinion, where you get the best uh, best opening for trying to break the Finstack's morale. Yeah. Another one, I think, is Rex. He, uh, he is also he's very much known for being a hothead. Um, I think he's actually he's calmed down over the years that I've known him, <laughs> which is a good thing because things used to be pretty bad at some point. <laughs> mm. But on that note, we're loading into the game. Game number one, we've got Finstack versus Nuclear Gandhi. Best of three formats. We hope you guys enjoy the games. And let's get into the draft, shall we? So, Sun Tzu, do you think we're going to see any surprises today in the draft compared to yesterday? I think we're going to see a surprising Skyrath pick. <laughs> Skyrath, you reckon we're going to see the Skyrath again? Uh, the Doom, and, uh, obviously Skyrath and Doom have been the most common picks in this tournament, uh, with well, the secondary one being the Shadow Shaman. Unless they're going to go for the ban out, but that's asking to leave too much in the pool. I'd agree, and we still haven't seen a Lycan in the tournament so Ten far, which is uh, nah, he, one he, thing he that keeps on getting banned out. It's one thing Justly I appreciate. So. Lycan, Lycan, uh, Lycan ban out is completely justified, Radiant in my opinion. Back. Yeah, and there it goes again. Goes. They're, they're not going to give it a chance. Tide's also been removed and Brewmaster taken out, so they're removing the team fight control from this game. And now they ban, they're going to ban Rasta, and then they're going to pick Doom. Do you think Rasta's going to be the target here? I don't know. Quite possible. And if they take Rasta out of the pool, Ten it does leave Doom. It also leaves the Batrider, who we haven't seen, and he's been left in the pool the entire tournament. Five yeah, like remaining. Batrider has a lot of potential, but at the same time, time. Um, the hit he took to his laning stage and to his jungling in particular, I think that that's finally <laughs> been enough to uh, dissuade some teams from picking him. Mm. Um, you can still pick him if you have a good Batrider. Oh, Skyrath. Oh, Skyrath being banned out does still mean Doom's in the pool, and of Dire course, team. he will be the first pick. He has been the first pick of this tournament, picked in every game bar one. Yeah, Radiant and of course, pick. if you ban out the Skyrath, you give away the sh Shadow Shaman. And of course, That's the Razor. That's a lot of pushing power already in just two heroes. 
Indeed it is. We're going to be looking for that core Aghanim Scepter into most likely a Refresher. But on the topic of pushing power, Death Prophet, Crobulus herself on the field. And now we need an, enig an Enigma. You reckon we're going to see an Enigma from Nuclear Gandhi or? I reckon either team could like it quite a bit. It'll be greedy, very greedy for both teams at this point. Maybe. Ten seconds remaining. Certainly with the Crobulus already on the field, it's going to be an uh, interesting one should Five Nuclear Gandhi opt remaining. for an Enigma here, because then they're going to have three very greedy core heroes already. Yeah, but it also it helps Zone you get time. that push rolling and helps you get the gold in. And that can sort of counteract the greed. Mm. It's not they as greedy when you have all that tower gold coming in. The only thing you're sort of lacking Dire is levels, but because you've got a one, one of the fastest junglers or the fastest jungler in the game, it, it sort of works out anyway. You get a lot of levels anyway. Fair enough. Equally though, we do see bans on Venomancer. So if Trixie's not going to be able to reprice as well as the offlane Venom. Ban on the Nature's Prophet, again targeted at Trixie. Yep. Five seconds Equally, we have a ban on the Lich from Finstack. And I can understand a Lich ban in this one. Giving Reserve Doom time. more armor, giving Death Prophet more armor, patches their vulnerability and their weakness. Enigma's the taken armor. out, so. And there goes the Enigma. Finstack don't want to give away that potential for massive AoE teamfight and black holes. Yep. However, what is still in the pool in terms of that big AoE lockdown? There's still the Magnus, although it's very rarely picked up these days. Yeah, I, I don't see a Magnus coming up here. There's um, also the Shaker and the Elder Titan that could be picked up. Of course, there is the Centaur <laughs> to boot, which doesn't Radiant surprise any of us at this point. But we get our Shaker, we get yeah. the potential for that long-range Fissure initiation. But what is the support going to be paired with the Earth Shaker? I like this. I like the Rubik. It could be... Well, I like the Mirana here. Mirana as a support with Earthshaker? Yeah. I it gives it gives you a good yeah, roaming, very easy to roaming power. And yeah, that can work out. Mm. But if you the were question to take is the support Mirana, where would you go for your final hero? Um, I'm not quite sure yet. Um... I think the Luna can work. Ten seconds, really. I think Again, a very greedy choice. Yeah. Then again, we have Five seen teams favor the slightly greedier lineups here at the Assembly. Like, the Shadow Shaman and the Rubik, they can roam fairly decently, but the Rubik's lift was nerfed, so he's not as good as he used to be. He's also, he's a very slow support to come online. Um, he doesn't feel that strong in this lineup. The Shadow Shaman... He can set up well for Ray, for um, Centaur, but... Well, I like the pickup of we'll Clockwork see. here. You can hookshot onto that Rubik. Rubik's not uh, tanky enough to really survive the Clockwork getting on top of him yeah. with the, rock, uh, with the um, battery assault. You've got the Earthshaker who can d deal with Rubik at a long-range point of initiation. Doom, of course, can be thrown on anyone, but ideally in this lineup you want to throw it on the center or the Razor. And then you've got Death Prophet who can come in with the AoE Silence and just go for teamfight territorial control. Yeah, and this, of course, drops the... Or, unless we see another jungling doom, it drops the doom over to the safe lane farmer. I, uh, I, I doubt expect, we'll I expect they need a, they need a support. Safe lane farmer will be uh, doom's choice. Then you've got your mid lane death prophet, your off lane clock, and a support to go with this earth shaker. You think Marana. Another one that comes to my mind is Alchemist, because negative armor for this lineup is going to be very nice. Yeah, I was actually looking at Alchemist bows or considering it for Finstack. Because uh, Fraggy played the Razor previously, and um, I believe Rexy played the Alchemist. Yes, he did. He played the Alchemist oh. in the mid lane. Which, again, would work here for Finstack, should they not want to put the Shadow Shaman there for the early levels. No, no it's, I don't think so. I don't think it's the Shadow Shaman. Alchemist can work for both of these teams. and I like Alchemist for Nuclear Gandhi, just because the Exorcism damage is counted as physical. Yeah, yeah, well, Radiant team it's not actually physical, it's mixed. I thought, um, I thought Exorcism was regarded as full physical, not composite. I think it's composite. Uh, we can just, we can do this to check, it's physical. <laughs> I pretty, I was pretty Ten sure it was physical, so remaining. negative armor is going to help out that death profit. And now we have Sun Tzu checking Dota <laughs> 2 Wiki just to make sure I'm right. <laughs> or to prove I'm wrong, depending on which mindset he's in. Equally, though, we do get bans on the Shadow, Sham, uh, Shadow Demon sorry, and Dying the Outworld Demon. Devourer. And I like the ban on the OD, considering they're looking for a mid laner. And as a mid laner who can brawl, who can right click away among the best of them, it's no, very it's good choice. Full physical. Yeah, right. 
I believe that's uh, three and a half points for me. <laughs> either way, Finstack for their final hero. We're looking for either a mid laner or something that can go to support with the Rubik and have a Shadow Shaman mid. We both, we both want to see a mid laner. Remaining. And again, we both think the Alchemist, what else could go there? Could we see um, a Templar Assassin remaining. possibly? It would be very rough. Against a uh, Death Prophet? Yeah, against no. a Death Prophet and a Doom, that would be very rough. We could see the likes of um, Puck. Puck could, Puck could work. work yeah. yeah. Puck isn't particularly popular right now. He's been played more on the offlane. Hmm. And Puck would be um, very squishy for this lineup to be fighting. Yeah, and he doesn't... He doesn't quite feel to have that much synergy with Ten the lineup as it is. I mean, he can sort of keep people in place for the centaur stuns. Uh, we yeah, get the Rexy Invoker. <laughs> He's a well-known I was I, I was talking I was talking with him uh, yesterday actually about the Invoker uh, asking him how he felt about it and he said that he didn't quite feel it was all that strong right now and so that I'm, I'm a bit surprised but well, once upon a time with Invoker, Rubik, that's a Sunstrike. Invoker, yep. Shackles, that's a Sunstrike. Yep. Centaur, Warrunner, again, again, good potential there. Yep. And with the Centaur, Warrunner getting the AoE initiation Five with the stun, Chaos Meteor, Deafening Blast, Sunstrike, all of the damage in the world. So I, I like the idea of the Invoker, but if it can yep. pay off in this game. And um, definitely, like, if you think back to the time when Trixie and Rexy were both on mouse sports, mm. uh, Rexy was actually at the time I'd say one of the top three invokers in Europe at, at that time. Okay. Um, I don't know how well his skills hold up. He's he's been out of the, he's been out of the absolute pro scene for a while, but it's a hero that you know if you enjoy playing it, you usually end up playing it quite a bit. He's just great fun in pubs and so forth. So. To Hopefully. my knowledge, they've been playing a lot more recently, though, with uh, Friends on Mushrooms playing in the Finnish League. Yeah, and like even when they don't do that, they stack a ton. Mm. Like these, these guys, especially Rexy, Trixie, and Fraggy, they've been playing together in different games for years and years and years. Um, it's probably close to a decade by now. Fair enough. And the final hero picked up by Nuclear Gande will be that Disruptor. So we're going to be looking for more AoE teamfight control with the Static Storm and the Kinetic Fields. I was actually know. thinking about Prepare the Disruptor yesterday, and I really like the hero. He's he's a lot of fun, and um, I think he's a bit underutilized. Underutilized, certainly, and I, I still feel he's one of the best counters to Tide, since Tide cannot stop the Static Storm silencing him. Yeah. And... Uh, he just, he, uh, he, just he, m he mainly sees play right now as a counter to Wisp because he can glimpse the Wisp back or and, uh, and sort of uh, force. Control of fight in yeah. terms of using the, the, uh, the glimpse to stop the relocate. Yeah. Technically can work on to a Nature's Prophet just as well. But uh, on that note, let's quickly introduce the players, shall we? For Nuclear Gande, we have ML Whisper reprising his role on the Doom. This is the second time he's played it in the tournament. We've got Deli on the Disrupt. In the mid lane, we've got Smamus on the Death Prophet. He has played different heroes in every single game so far in the tournament. So he, I believe he actually has the widest pool at this point in. Yeah. On the off lane at the minute, we've got Hartwell on the Earthshaker. He's going to be just looking to block this up to help out Utka, who's going to be the final member of Nuclear Gande on that Clockwork Goblin. But on the flip side of this coin, for the fin stack, we do have Fraggy reprising his role as a razor. This guy is quite literally in this tournament, Mr. PVE. He likes to farm, <laughs> and he will farm over kills some of the time. It's an interesting way to watch him play. I mean, we saw him get, I believe it was 70 CS, 29 denies in 11 minutes yesterday. Something, something along, along those lines, yeah. yeah. He was very strong in terms of his farming role. Over in the mid lane for the Finstack, we have, of course have Rexy on that Invoker. And then down on the on the off lane, we've got Jerax on the Rubik with the Illusion Rune. Suklamuna on the uh, on the Shadow Shaman, and I'm going to start calling him Suklas just for, just for my sanity here. <laughs> and finally over towards Trixie, who's going by the name Kale in game, but he's going to be on the Centaur Warrunner. So. Yeah, and, and they're giving a lot of support to Centaur in this 
makes a lot of sense. Yeah, you were on about this yesterday, having it as a supported, effectively one role in the offline. Yeah, yeah, that that can work a lot. A lot of uh, you can get a lot of out of a lot out of it, and mm. um, like the Earth Shaker is really good as a defensive support here, mm. and the Disruptor. He can sort of be good as a defensive sport. Well, Emil Whispers rotated in the jungle, and he's got the armor aura from the Wildkin, so he's going to at least get some early levels in the jungle. So not what I expected, but then again, when uh. you're up against this potential stunlock burst tri-lane... I think it's probably the it's right probably decision. probably the right decision, yeah. yes. Otherwise, you could be walking into a, a hoof stomp into a double edge as well as telekinesis. It's not going to be a pleasant time for a Doom. It's not often thing. you get to see a Disruptor playing a... Effective safe lane farmer. <laughs> no, it isn't. But if you consider what the disruptor can get item wise, Aghanims on a disruptor effectively gives you an AoE doom. Yeah, exactly. It is a scary prospect and something and to And even before get. that change was put into place, oh, we got a smoke up. Indeed, they want to get something from the back of this jungle. You got Jerex <laughs> and Sucus. They've also been revealed as well. Yeah. So there's going to be no surprises here. However, Jerex does still have the smoke. Well they timing that well. Try to get anything here they're going to try to telekinesis up uh, smam us but are they going to oh. find anything in time no i think he's not got the range yes he does sunstrike's going to drop it he throws him out of the sunstrike a little bit of miscommunication there between rexy and jerax and the stun will come in from the earth shaker blocking suklas from getting close and being able to finish off uh, smam us there nice uh, escape there from smam us yeah that wasn't quite what they needed mm. the haste shadow shaman couldn't get on the point in time and it was down mostly to this man here Hartwell on that Earth Shaker, he managed to yep. stop any form of first blood. A very nice. Uh, just happened to stroll by at the right time and indeed felt out the, that smoke and rotation. Well, we could have first blood here. Sunzo is going to drop. Delhi will get bursted down. Double edge to clean up, and Trixie claims the first blood of this game. Oh, that's not what you want to see. No, it isn't. You don't want to see Trixie have a good game. <laughs> I, ha I have to say, I have to say, um, before their first game yesterday, mm. I uh, might have BM'd him a bit on uh, on Steam about him being a bit of a feeder. Well, and then he decided to uh, die once in two games. So uh, I decided to start out this day pretty much the same way, <laughs> just <laughs> strolling fast and uh, doing a walk by BM. Uh, you've known him for <laughs> what uh, five years, if uh, not more. Some six years, maybe. It's been a long time. Mm. Well, back in the mid lane, we've got Smamus. He could be potentially rotated on by Suclus here. All it'll take is the shackles. And are they going to go for it? No, he's go going to wisely uh, not engage that Death Prophet, even though they have the invoke. He doesn't have the uh, health or mana pool really want to survive. It should the Death Prophet be able to turn around with that uh, level two uh, Crypt Swarm. But uh, on the topic of the Centaur, quickly. Opting for the Ring of Health instead of saving up for that Blink Dagger after the Tranquils, which uh, surprises me. The Stomp does miss, however, the, uh, the uh, Fissure coming from the Earth Shaker will connect. Doesn't, it's not enough, however, to trap him within the Kinetic Field, and Trixie's just going to walk away from this one. He's playing very safe, does not want to get caught out, and considering. Is he going for a Vanguard? I think he might actually be going for a Vanguard. Is he going for a Vanguard? Okay. This is Trixie. The, I've, this is I've tr seen mm. him. He's he's argued with me before about the vanguard. Of, of a vanguard. Yeah, like if you play a a um, off laner who's essentially just wants to be in in the opponent's face, then at least in his mind, vanguard lets you be so much more aggressive so much earlier. True. So but if you really want to get in someone's face, I raised the point of blink dagger. But again, I suppose yeah, central does I use his health as a weapon in terms of double edge. So the regeneration is certainly going to be a nice thing. This is where, where we normally see the pipe. Yeah. It's an odd one. Does return go before or after the damage reduction? Uh, return goes before. Yeah. yeah, so it works out then. But I believe uh, return is, ha isn't is affected at all by the damage reduction. In what, uh, in what sense were you thinking that the return was... No, I mean, like, if it were... if it when after the damage reduction, then something like a Vanguard would severely reduce the amount of return that you get. Uh, no, return doesn't work in that fashion, as we no, do no. get a, a initiation on the mid lane. Smamus will go down, but Rexy will most likely pay for his crimes here if he's not careful. The tower will be able to finish him off, and that's going to be a one-for-one -one trade in terms of mid laners and support are there to pick up that experience. Uh, the mathematics of return, it's a 
uh, base amount of damage plus a percentage of the centaur's strength. It's uh, also triggered when the right click is initiated, not when the right click fires. So uh, Vanguard would have no effect at all on a return strike. That's good. If, if it was um, Kraken Shell, then I could understand what you were saying about Vanguard, that they don't stack at all. But uh, Return doesn't have any They effect. actually used to. They used to, yes, but they don't <laughs> now. That was a bug uh, in the very early versions. Mm. Made him uh, nearly an unkillable mess. <laughs> but then again, mid lane against Mammoth getting initiated on. The Sunstrike's going to drop, but it won't connect this time. We have the potential for a turnaround. Sucklus needs to be very careful. One more Crypt Swarm could have spelled his death, but everyone's going to fall back, and they fail at the attempt to kill off uh, Mammoth once more. However, Clockwork on the... Um, on the offlane is taking a fair amount of damage. I believe that must have been a plasma field. Yes, it was. We haven't really talked about this um, this top lane much in this game. I mean, you've got Utka, who currently, in terms of CS, has 23 and versus Fraggy. And now they're going to go for the attempt on Utka. And telekinesis this should be more than enough to bring down the clockwork, especially with that plasma field finishing yeah. off. Now you've got Hartwell brawling with Jerax and trying Jerax. to bring him under the tower. But He's going to get out. Okay. We've still got kills elsewhere going on the map. Disruptor dies to what is a Sunstrike combo there. Emma Whisper can't really do anything to stop it, unfortunately. Uh, they do have a kill center off for this exchange. So. Top tower is kills across attack. the map. We're seeing aggression across the board. It's the kind of game that we like to see. Yeah. But at the same time, Fraggy's just been Radiance farming away. Under attack. And my god, just look at those last hits. Indeed, he has got four centaur. Ten for the, uh, you can't the have a centaur getting 36 and 9 on the offlane. No, you can't. That's going to be a very quick. In this game, it's a pipe, not a vanguard. And it will potentially lead into that Dyer's blink dagger. Middle tower is under uh, attack. The pipe's much better, though. <laughs> yeah, the pipe in the early game is going to help them out tenfold, con considering the potential damage coming out of a static storm. And we get another in uh, stampede, Radiant's this time going for ML Whisper. He's trying to attack. kite him around him. They don't manage to hit him with the stampede. Now, Trixie could get punished with this one. Not going to be able to get on top of him quick enough, it seems. Then again, here comes the hookshot potential. It will connect. Gets him with the cogs. Or not, not even he the cogs. He doesn't have, have the cogs. Mana, but he does have the battery assault, which is doing more than enough in terms of stopping him. He can't cast the stop. Look at that. That's a that's a break dancing centaur. And, well, they'll pick up the kill there. And then Hartwell gets the extra gold there. So he's going to be building <sighs> towards his boots any second. Tricks, tricks, tricks. Top tower <laughs> Could he potentially attack. be living up to the namesake that you thought? Yeah, there's... Well, I mean, he's still doing well, though, so... Indeed, but now uh, we have the top lane being pushed in here by the Finstack. They want to get uh, the early tower advantage, and they want to try to get the death ball online Radiant's before Exorcism. Speaking of Exorcism, it is now available almost level 8, actually, on Smamus, so we could potentially be seeing a push on this middle lane in a very short amount of time if we get rotations in from the Earthshaker and from that Disruptor. Equally, though, Vexy does need to be careful. He has to respect the damage potential of an exorcism. A lot of people underestimate it, especially at level 1. Yeah. He's going to be a lot safer, though. He's almost completed up his 4 staff. With the 4 staff, he'll be uh, very safe. In terms of yeah. This We've got Trixie and Emma Whisper just trading blows right now. Double edge for a couple of right clicks. Really, it's just a fight for momentum and control on this uh, bottom lane currently. It's interesting... Given how much, um, how much rotations we've seen already, Sokolis is actually just level 3. Well, he has been spending all of his time rotating around the map in this one. He hasn't had the chance to sit and take Yeah, fun. but Jerax has also been rotating a lot, and he is level 6, so there's a pretty, pretty dis big disparity for them. Yeah, well, for Sukhlis, uh, this could be a big problem going into the mid-game, considering you generally want those Shadow Shaman wards up as soon yeah, as possible. Yeah, exactly. We're 10 minutes in, and he's still a good Shots. three levels away. It's uh, not exactly they a also very situation to be like, in. In a situation like that, you generally like to uh, rotate one of your, one of your farmers and uh, have him be a bit more aggressive and give over that lane to the Shadow Shaman. Mm. But well, they, they don't really have... They don't really have anyone they want to take off the lane quite yet. I was going to say, because what would they take off the lane? If they take the Razor off the lane, well, Fraggy's not going to like that, considering. Yeah. And he's almost got his mechanism. The first finished. one who's probably going to leave the lane is Trixie, but that's a and while He's still off. got a pipe to, be, uh, to finish yeah. up and to acquire a Blink Dagger. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if he's going to wait for the Blink Dagger, though. That, that would be... Very greedy. Yeah, that would be way too long. I think he's going to start moving fairly soon, but 
even even then you that's that's the off lane that you're that you put the shadow uh, the under level shadow shaman mm. that's not quite what you want in the meantime we have a rotation bottom we do have a hookshot available so we could be looking for a fight down here and now we get the stampede they're going to try to go on emma whistler but there is a clockwork here the hookshot in will go straight in and stun out trixie and now that the fight just starts to spiral out of control X as well they lose the clockwork they may lose the doom no they're gonna lose hartwell instead and now you've got smammers trying to brawl with Fraggy, and that's not a fight he wants to take Fraggy will melt that death prophet and now we can see a potential push for this tier one and it's a very difficult one for Nuclear Gandhi to try to hold. They needed the Static Storm in that one, but Delhi wasn't in the fight. They needed to get the Doom thrown off, but he couldn't. He needed to fall back because of how quickly he was losing health, even with that mechanism present. Yeah, and that could still have gone a lot worse. Um, Indeed, it could, but Delhi TP's in, and he's just going to get blasted down before the Static Storm can be thrown. And now we get Doom thrown on the Fraggy. Is that going to block him out? No, it's not. Fraggy should be safe. In the meantime, you've got Suklis just brawling a little bit with ML Whisper. That's not going to pay off in his favor. And Utka will finish off Trixie here. Doom taking the last swing, and that's going to be a counter kill two for one in favor of Nuclear Gandhi. Yeah. And they managed to hold their tier one. In the meantime, speaking of tier ones, we've got Rexy. He doesn't care about the fight. He's just going to take the tier one <laughs> in the mid lane with his Forge Spirits. Yeah. And, um, yeah, Rexy, in that fight as well, he was missing his sun strikes. Now we get another hook join, and it's going to connect to Jerax, and Jerax could potentially take a fall here. He does telekinesis and throw Utka, but a couple more right clicks, hell, even the battery assault's going to interrupt the TP, and that will be a kill. In the meantime, however, Earthshaker did die to Rexy, and now he's going to TP out. They need to, they need to kill him. They didn't get the vision, I think, or just difficulty right clicking him there? I could swore they would have had I don't vision. Know. Oh, uh, there was a uh, Forge Spirit. It blocked the angle. Right. Yeah, 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 that makes a lot more sense. In the meantime, we do have a stampede on the bottom lane. This fight never ends. Mammoth getting initiated on and will get brought down by Fraggy. The Fisher wasn't there in time from Hartwell. And action across the board. What can we say? Try to, I'm going to try to finish off the thought that I was uh, on earlier. You mean about five minutes ago? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jerax, we've seen him twice now. Lift and throw a hero away from the Sunstrike. Mm. And that really tells you something about that. As they, they hadn't played this invoker for a while, I think. And yes. the coordination isn't quite there. Rexy on his own is playing quite well. There's no, no problem there. And Jerax on his own is playing quite well. They aren't syncing up quite as well. And that is giving Nuclear Gandhi a bit more space than they would have gotten otherwise. Mm. I'd completely agree on that one. And uh, if they can get this miscoordination uh, mis down and fix this problem, they're going to start to at least transition better into the mid game, I should feel. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're already looking very good. And also the Shadow Shaman wards are being dropped to the Roshan, so. Well, Roshan, are they going to try to contest this? We do have many members of Nuclear Gandhi around, and the Clockwork Rocket does fly in to reveal it, but surely it's too late now. They're not going to be able to, be able to react in time on this one. Then again, we do have Trixie in the visibility <laughs> room getting a little bit ballsy, but then again, this is signature Trixie getting in the enemy's face. And you can see the Somebody's pings. Somebody's going to die. You can see the pings. He wants to fight this. Stomp goes on to Spam. A Sunstrike as well. That's going to be more than enough for the double edge. Surely a right click, no, a faithful from Rubik. Jerax does clean this up. And we do have a steal. What was stolen? We got the Crypt Swarm. And that's going to be more damage being thrown Utka's way. And he'll be brought down to boot. That's a double kill for Jerax. Yeah. And with three points in telekinesis, you can just pick up that clockwork and drop him outside of his, co his cogs. And mm. There's no, no, no place to be safe now. And now, well, it's Radiant's not been completed into a full hood. He went for a belief dagger before he got the, full, uh, the pipe finished. He's got a hood of defiance only currently onto. Yeah, the casual hood is nice. True, casual hood is nice. And now we get the static storm dropping for, for the first time I think in this game. Emma was going to be the target though, and he's going to just get brought down before he can even get a kill here. Doom was thrown onto Trixie, but it's not going to be enough on its own, surely. And Smam is trying to chase down. Rexy and uh, Fraggy, but are they going to be able to finish him? Is Fraggy brought back into the fight by a, a glimpse, but the disruptor pays for his sins for that with that one, and now we get a double kill again for Jerax. But Fraggy on a mega kill once more. This seems to be tradition here for Finsac right now, and Utka will equally be brought back into this fight. Solo. The whole team is solo, but they're... Couldn't coordinate a kill on that one. <laughs> uh, speaking of that, Suklis getting caught out by a Fisher. I eat my own words. It happens occasionally, and the tier two in the mid will fall in favor of the fin stack yeah that was still a very nice fight from them mm.
Shadow Shaman actually has enough to pick up a Blink Dagger near enough at this point as well, I'll point out. So we're going to be looking for more aggression out of the Fin stack, as if they weren't aggressive enough. And the Rubik has enough as well, but... Very tr He's Rubik sitting on 3,000 gold. Yeah. Wow. Four stuff straight purchase there. That's uh, yep. no surprise. For the Rubik, I actually prefer the four stuff in this uh, in this lineup, considering there are quite a few things that can catch him. Yeah, and now, and now they've got the double four stuff, and attack. you already saw it doing work in that fight. Indeed. So it's going to be good. Well, when you're against the clockwork, blink dagger sort of becomes second priority. Uh, you, if you yeah. can't risk getting jumped yeah. on without a four stuff to get you out of the cogs. In the meantime, items coming up across the board. Let's take a look at the uh, the items tab here. We've got a potential Shivas coming online for ML Whisper. For Delhi, he's going to most likely go for his Arcane Boots. Smamus, uh, what would you pick up on Smamus here? Because he's not had any item progression of any significance for the last seven minutes. <laughs> well, he's sitting on the, bra the bracer, so get a drum. Yeah, a, a drum feels like the right choice. Right, right now, you need that bit of uh, extra survivability. It's gonna it's gonna work out nicely for you. Mm, indeed, and for uh, Utka, either a blade mail or a Aghanim scepter. Finally, for Hartwell, he'll want his arcanes. Rexy, he's got his Aegis now. Rexy's pretty much got everything. He's gonna go for that Necro three at this point. And then Fraggy's going for, of course, the Aghanim scepter. Suklamoon is going for most likely an Aghanims of his own instead of a um, a blink dagger, which honestly surprises me a little. Uh, what else do we have coming up across the board? A four star for Trixie and for Jerax, most likely a blink next if he wants attack. to keep going for the aggressive Dyer's mobility build. And attack. equally for the middle tower, we've got the exorcism being popped. Smamus, he wants to finish off this tier one, and I don't think he's going to be able to. The stun just come out from the Earthshaker. Jerax is here as well, and this is going to be more than enough. And that wasn't from the Earthshaker, that was stolen, of course, by, uh, by Jerax, who's also got exorcism now as well. So, very big push coming the way of that mid lane. Equally, bot lane, we do have the hook shot onto Rexy. The seven wards are down trying to see to the tower, but uh, now we need to be very careful. Rexy telekinesis like glimpsed back into the uh, into the doom, and there will be a counter kill there onto the disruptor. Trixie trying to get in the back lines and do what he can, but now in comes Fraggy from the sidelines, starting to steal damage away from Emma Whisper, but he's going to be able to back up from the uh, from the uh, Fisher to block there. And Utka will potentially pay for his sins once again, and in comes the aggressive Trixie to get that stomp combo and save Rexy from getting right-clicked down by that pesky clockwork goblin. Yeah, that that looked nice until the pincer move came in and... Indeed, once that came in, there was no escape. You can see Smamus trying to hold this, but he'll pay for his attempts with his life once more. And just any any kind of defense is being so heavily punished by the fin stack. Rexy, however, will take more, but that's only going to be an Aegis. The tier three is now the order of business here for the fin stack. Yeah, they're rolling hard right now. There's, they have so much tank ability between the Razor and the Centaur, and Rexy so mobile. There, there's just no real means of getting to and killing off these scores. Mm, indeed. And it now you've got mass TPs away. You've got Trixie going up to the top lane. They don't want to risk getting picked off around this uh, tier 3 tower, and I can understand why. You don't want to give Doom the kills. Yeah, but um, without the Doom up, True. they weren't going to find a kill right there. It's. I think it's ju more just... They're just playing it safe. I, if they really wanted to, they could have probably sieged a bit more. Hmm. Well, for the Shadow Shaman, he's get, uh, Aghanim's coming up at about 900 gold, so going to have even more pushing power available for Super Rexy. in a second, and ML Whisper will be the target here. They're going to drop the Hex, but they're not going to chase it up due to the mass rotations coming in here from the uh, side of Nuclear Gandhi. They're trying to defend ML Whisper as much as possible, even though it is very difficult in this game. And the, the push is getting out of control oh, now. Speaking of hookshots, we do get the initiation onto an illusion. This is... Uh, this is the second time we've seen a air ball onto an illusion, I believe, in terms of ultimates in the tournament. But we and do have Trixie used, pushing oh. that top lane. They used the exorcism as well, which was yeah. uh, not a good thing right there. But now we get the stampede from Trixie. Looking for, to fight this, maybe? Smamus? What can he find here? Are they going to be able to pick up anyone? I think they're going to find the entire team. This is going to be very bad. Doom thrown onto Fraggy, though, and he's going to start right-clicking for a fist amount of damage to the Eye of the Storm up, stealing the armor. And now you've got Sukas just bursting people down. Fraggy on a wicked stick. Double kill. Are they going to find more? Uka? Potentially? No. They're going to back up. Instead, they're just going to go for this tower. And with the Aghanims up on Fraggy, that tower is going to melt in no time at all. Yeah, I was just going to say that. As Fraggy completed his Aghanims, uh, Invoker also got his level 3 necros, mm. so 
And we do get the there. drum up for <laughs> Death Prophet, but at this point, let's take a quick look at the graph, shall we, where we've got a lull in the action. That's a 20k experience lead. It's the gold that I want to see. Gold was 20k gold lead in yeah. favor of the Finn stack. And you can see it in the items alone. You consider the Death Prophet, she's got boots and a drum versus the other mid laner in this game, which is Rexy. He's got a Necro 3, a 4 staff, and brown boots. It Come really on, shows the difference in gold. It has to be the pipe now. Come on, Trixie. Right, he's got his four stuff. You would think it'd be a pipe. Yeah. Given the region. You, he's almost got the goal for it, so. Mm. Once they have the pipe as well, they've got everything they need pretty much. Especially the Agonim's the even on the. the yeah. Oh, God. Mm. That's going to be painful. Indeed, it is. And it's <laughs> it's a very steep hill for Nuclear Gandhi to climb at this point. And, but of course, this is a best of three Actually, series, ladies and gentlemen. I, I changed my mind. I think. I think. The Centaur should get an Aghanims, and then the Invoker should get an Aghanims, and they'd have five Aghanims. Mm. Because okay. uh, the Rubik is also building an Aghanims. The Aghanims strand. We did have a stolen <laughs> glimpse to secure that kill there onto the Disruptor. Hmm. So, Team Aghanims aside, this is, of course, the best of three series. Uh, Sun Tzu, do you reckon that this game for Nuclear Gandhi could harm their morale going into game two? Are they a, a team that relies on momentum? Or can they clear their heads and come back into the next one? Well, the key player here is again Emma Whisper, and he's not had a good game. He's not had the worst game on his team, but a two-two-three. That's yeah. I, I think I think they're going to have to dig deep to come back in the next game. This onslaught from Finstack has been really impressive, and well. It's Radiant's what I'm coming to expect out of Finstack at this point. They, yeah. they turn yeah, up that relentless aggression, and it's very that, hard to stop it. That's sort of the upside. You exactly know what they're going to try and do. Now the question is, how do you counter that? Either be more aggressive than Finstack, punish their aggression. That's going to be hard. <laughs> that's going to be very hard, <laughs> considering we have Trixie, who is probably the single most aggressive player here today. Yeah. Uh, or you go for... Something that can weather the, s the storm in a very long game. Uh, but again, yeah, against I mean, thi stack. This feels like they were actually trying to go for a pretty defensive lineup. You have the Earth Shaker and the Disruptor. That's pretty defensive sports. Very you true. You even have like both Doom and Clock on the same team. And the problem is, well, they're both very good at surviving, but who's going to deal the damage between them? True. It's, very true. it's all about the it's all about the death prophet and she's a 172 she's not had a good game no again this is how you shut down a death prophet you kill her excessively in the early game it's the only yeah. way you can stop it because if a death prophet starts to snowball your towers are going to be non-existent in a very short amount of time yeah and she's she's so low she's still very much burstable like all it takes is centaur to get up in her face and they can take her down and a matter of seconds. Yeah. In the meantime, we've got Finstack poking and prodding at the spot in tier 3. And now the fight's going to go off. Doom thrown onto Trixie before he can do anything. And Static Storm's going to come down as well. They're all caught in it. However, can we find a counter kill anywhere? Fraggy's going to try to bring down Utka. Utka will fall. However, they lose uh, Fraggy for his sins there. And Emma Whisper's going to be the next target with those shackles. But in comes a big Echo Slam from Hartwell. Trying to do what damage he can, but there was a pipe up stopping some of that. But now Jerax going to take a fall with a couple of right clicks. A stolen set of wards. Uh, sorry, they said seven wards dropped, but we get instant buyback by the Shadow Shaman. Now Rexy going to be brawling with Hartwell. Hartwell will go down. Can't survive the damage coming out of Rexy at this point. And Rexy on a double kill as well. Where did he get a Sunstrike kill? Or? Um, no, he brought down. Um, I don't think so. No. He brought down the Disruptor as well, I believe. Yeah. And we get buybacks from the Earthshaker and the Death Prop as well, but now we, here we go with the burst. The Sunstrike's going to drop. It's not enough to finish him off. They needed a little bit more. One more right click, but Trixie decided wiser to escape, and now we get the possible counter aggression coming in. But Sukhus will come in and get those shackles onto Hartwell. Emma Whisper will finish off the Invoker, but now they need to find Trixie before he can blink away. One more right click will be able to do it, but he doesn't find it, unfortunately. And now Sukhus is going to be brawling with. Uh, <laughs> with ML Whisper, that's not a fight he particularly wants to take, but I'm surprised they backed up there and let Trixie escape on no health. Yeah. I mean, th it was still a good fight for uh, Nuclear Gandhi, and the fact that they started off the fight by dooming Trixie, he, it gave them a lot more space to move around. 
Indeed it did, and we do now have that Shiva's Garda available for the Doom as well, which is going to help him to this next team fight. Yeah, he's slowly getting up what he needs, but... Incoming. It's a very slow game for a Doom, considering what we'd normally expect yeah. with the Devourer giving him that all-important early aggression. Well, you also expect normally the Hand of Midas, but he's True, opted but to not go for that this game. I was going to say, is this a game where you would honestly consider a Midas? Maybe. Like, considering he was forced into the jungle in the early game, considering the tri-lane centaur effectively, would you still go for the Midas? Maybe. Then you're a more, like, more ballsy man than <laughs> I am. Well, he hasn't died that much, so he could have probably pulled it off and gotten decent value from it. Hmm. Um, well, we it would have delayed that his other, up for his other ab stuff a bit, but he would have he would be a lot Dyer's further along right now instead. Hmm. Oh, we do have a repetition going towards that top lane. Smam is trying to get what tier once he can with that exorcism. However, Roshan it's going to be a Roshan the for the Finstack in the meantime. Well, a little bit of a trade here. About a thousand gold each way, but an Aegis on the side of Finstack. It's going to be a very tall order to fight into for Nuclear Gandhi with this next one, especially with Exorcism on cooldown. And we've got all of the Finstack. They don't care about that potential push in a tier two. They're just going for the base. And we get the TPs coming in to defend this. All five members of Nuclear Gandhi ready on this front line. But Exorcism is down. There's no refresher either, so there's not going to be any way to fight this one. Smam lifted up, thrown out of the base, and Flaggy stealing damage from ML Whisper. Are they going to find anything? We get Utka hookshotting in, catches Jerax in the static storm. He's not going to be able to escape, surely. And in fact, he is. He's going to force stuff away, and they've got the stampede up as well, so he's going to be safe for a few more seconds. But now Hartwell caught out. Doom was thrown on Trixie, but there's nothing, and it's counted. It's stolen and thrown onto Delhi. Just a brilliant steal right there coming out of uh, coming out of Jerax, and certainly on the ball. But now we get the siege there. Serpent Wars are down. We've got the Eye of the Storm up. The... As soon as this cliff, this cliff goes down, it'll be the buildings. But no, instead, they're going to go for the kill on ML Whisper. These guys like to get kills. Yeah. And GG is called game one in this best of three, going towards the Finstack. That was a real cute interaction in that fight. Um, Trixie was... He realized that him getting doomed that fast fight, mm. that was the deciding factor. So he was staying intentionally behind the rest of his team. And the Doom actually ran past the team just in order to get to Doom that tri Doom Trixie again, but it was too late into the fight. The damage had already been done, and it wasn't enough. So Indeed. <laughs> it so was still, it was fun to see. What do you think Nuclear Gandhi could have done differently in this one? Um, I think having both Clockwork and Doom was not. It was not enough damage to deal with them. It, it made the centaur effectively unkillable during the early fights. Mm, they didn't have the burst damage to bring him down. Yeah. And um, I think they also probably would have wanted to pressure uh, Orexia a bit more. Mm, indeed, indeed. He had a, he had a very good game. Uh, even even with Jerax, the miscoordination <laughs> between Jerax and Rexy, I can understand. But he still was a very effective game for the Invoker. He got that early Necro three. He got the four stuff in a very short amount of time, and that gave him the mobility and the control to push towers, take the fights. And because of he had the level advantage, he did yep. more damage with the Exhort build. Yeah, and he was just so effective at moving in and out of those fights, and um, just watching him. Just take out heroes one on one during those fights. It was really nice. All right. On that note, we're going to take a uh, minute or two break, ladies and gentlemen. We shall be back in a few minutes with game number two between the Finstack and Nuclear Gandhi. Oh, uh, cancel. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to what will be game two going into the best of three between the Finstack and Nuclear Gandhi. Sanzu, what do you expect going into game number two? Um, Nuclear Gandhi, I think the, the, mo the best success they've had this tournament was with the heavy push strats. Mm. And I think they have to fall back on that. That that could actually work in uh, in terms of if you can avoid 
getting ganked by um, the dual roaming that Finstack generally runs. You can hit a push timing that will let you take away a lot of that space that Fraggy and Rexy and even Trixie have been utilizing to farm. So if you can put that pressure on, that's your opening, I so think, you, right you now. you want Nuclear Gandhi to be more aggressive, to push more, to give Finstack no space to farm, no space to move? Yeah, earlier push timings, I could even see, like, I don't know, maybe even some, like, the Enigma is probably going to be banned out again. Mm. So, but you could pick up something like a Chen. A we Chen don't see Chen that often, but he gives you a very early push timing. Same for the Enchantress, in my, yeah. mind. In my yeah. mind, an Enchantress lets you brawl a little bit better. Yeah, the Enchantress gives you better brawl. If you want to go all-out push, mm. the uh, Chen might be the better choice. Indeed, with the test of faith and the creep yeah. abilities, I, I can understand that. But going into game number two, we do have match point in favor of Finstack and bans out on the Brewmaster. Doom. No Doom this game. That's a bit of a break. Uh, the Lycanthrope and, of course, the Tidehunter. First pick yeah. is, once again, going to be Fraggy's Razor. And this leaves the uh, Shadow Shaman in the game again. And, and Skywrath Mage. Yeah. I don't know if... I think they're sort of thinking that if Nuclear Gandhi ends up taking the Skywrath Mage, that's probably good for them. Mm. Because that it's, it's a hero where they would have to outgank Finstack, fin stack, and I'm Sky not Rath sure Rath about that. Well, well they're we going to try for Sky it. Rath. They're going to try to play the outganking game, which is a rough choice. Um, I, I'm expecting to see a Shadow Shaman and... Potentially even uh, something even heavier with the push. Pugna even, perhaps. Venomancer as well. That, that's going to be a lot of early game power. Indeed it is. They're going to have the ability to slow down this game. They're going to have the ability to, to spam those wards. And we've seen Venomancer once already in the tournament. It was in the hands of Trixie. And he went yep. for that off-lane Venomancer with the heavy ward build and just look for the all-out push. Yeah, for some reason I'm feeling this more as a safe lane farming Venomancer. You still feel it'll be a core Venomancer? I think so, yeah. I think we don't see that much support Venomancer anymore for some reason. Uh, well, he the, the game is too fast for a support Venomancer in some ways. Venomancer, sure, I'll, I'll say as a support, he's incredibly squishy. He doesn't get the levels that he needs. The yeah. push is uh, quite weak with a support, ven uh, support Venom as well. So, yes, I can understand. Yeah, and it's, it's more the, the fact that you don't get those wards up quite as fast. And if, if you have those super fast wards, you can put on a lot more pressure. You can do a lot more in this early push meta game. So, very true. And going into this game, we do also have that Death Prophet. It's going to switch hands this time and it'll be picked up by the Finstack. Yep. Whereas previously it was played by Nuclear Gandhi. And I'm wondering how effective the Finstack can be with this Death Prophet. And it's potentially going to be a Rexy Death Prophet. Yeah, most likely, and remaining. that's a lot of uh, a lot of push in the Five death ball. As soon as remaining. as soon as they get the agonims on the razor, that's going to be really hard to hold your towers. So this sets up nuclear for a. They have to have a timing that goes in before the razor agonims, in my mind, at least. Mm, so they need something that can take yeah. the early game by storm, and we are yeah, seeing the ban that, out on the chrono. That the still board. means that well. They, they're they're going to need that Skywrath to be really effective and really gank up the uh, mid lane. It, you can also, s I suppose, argue for a mid lane Skywrath. A mid lane Skywrath could but the, the, the potentially work. The problem there is that, yeah, the, the problem there is that he's very, very gankable. Mm. And Five Finstack seconds. likes to gank. So, I think... I don't know if you do that against a team that is so that usually runs so mobile supports. Very true, but uh, ban wise, we do see the ban on the void, the shadow sham, and the clockwork, and the earthshaker. This does leave Finstack. I'm the surprised. Option of the I'm surprised that the shadow shaman actually wasn't picked up in the first four. So was I actually. The the death prophet. We, we've generally seen him the first uh, four bans of the first four picks. Yeah. Um, the enigma still in the pool, so. Enigma still in the pool, yes, but that that uh, could work very well for. Either team, really. Um, Nuclear Gandhi has the... I mean, even with the Weaver and the Skywrath in the mix, 
they do have the option of go of adding like Enigma and and the Invoker, mm. and after that you'd have like this mega mega minion push. True, true. We could see that. But now, equally with the Weaver and the Shadow Demon picks, Weaver isn't an early game carry. It can't come online before the Razor, in my mind. No. He needs at least 35 minutes. Yeah, like, he's, he can be deceptively effective with just the Lincolns. Like, he becomes very hard to kill, and he can just die a lot, and uh, he can do a lot that way. But at the same time... I don't. I don't feel. Well, it's going to be the Abaddon v. Weaver lane, and that's. It's a very strong lane, but. It, it's also not very mobile. It's. It remaining. doesn't allow you to put on that much pressure. It just helps Weaver win his lane. Oh, Abaddon, very tanky support. He can do a good amount for his team, but. I feel like for Is Nuclear Gandhi, time? they're splitting their roles a little much here. Yeah. They've got heroes that come online in different timings. Weaver comes on yeah, around definitely. the 30, 35 minute mark. You've got the Abaddon. He varies in terms of how much farms he, he can get. But if he goes for the mech and the arcanes, he's going to most likely have those up, I should think, around the 25 minute mark. Venomancer, if this is a core Veno, it can come online a lot earlier. If it's a support Veno, which it might be in this case. Might be. No. Well, that, that would have to that would force almost... Against this lineup, back. that will almost force a core Abaddon. And the only team I can remember that actually runs a core Abaddon is uh, Loda from Alliance. Mm. I can hear that. Back. That is, that's a very interesting, very interesting pick, uh, or a, a very interesting strategy that they run. And they haven't, haven't actually run it in almost a year now, I think. Well, in the meantime, for the Finn stack, Nature's Prophet Ten will be picked up. Remaining. This isn't surprising in the slightest. I was saying during the uh, the after the Five second banning phase, remaining. that Nature's Prophet is there for Trixie and for their offlane, it brings more push. Yeah. What more can it's they want? They've got their three cores that all bring a heavy push. They've got the Shadow Demon for support to help set up. Where do you go for your final hero for the Fin stack? Um. Well, they have the Shadow Demon, so y you can pick up Leshrax or Leshrax. Would you be could even one. go with the uh, the Shadow Demon Kunkka as roaming supports. Mm. Well, Kunker and Leshrac are the two that come to mind, uh, immediately at least, due to setting up the stun. Dazzle could work as well here, brings negative armor to the table, pairs well with the Shadow Demon. However, it's... Um, Maybe. Less common these days than it used to be, I think is the fair way to say it. Yeah. And Finstack yeah, opted to ban the, the thing is, The thing is, I... Like, a Shadow Demon... Dazzle, I'd like to see that as an offensive try lane. I'm not sure who they'd put it. I guess the Razor would be the core for that lane if they were to run it. Mm. So I'm not quite sure, though, about that. I mean, it's certainly... If it's going to be a Weaver bad and off lane, that does weaken the uh, safe lane. And you might want to run an offensive try lane against that and just leave Trixie on the bottom against the Weaver Abaddon. He should be fairly safe against that still. Mm -hmm. For Nuclear Gandhi though, what would you pick for your final? Because we've said their timings are all off right now. I think they need a mid and... Okay, yeah. Okay, we get the bat. I, I was, I was thinking of DK actually, but Batrider can... Well, he provides a lot of initiation as well. DK would have provided push along with the initiation. As well as counter push in the form of breathe fire. I, yeah. I would potentially have favored the DK selecting more than the Batrider here, but Batrider yeah. as a hero, you cannot underestimate him. Sure, he's been nerfed. He is still an incredibly effective initiator and one of the scarier ones in my mind. Yeah, Ten like, remaining. I think he might have, no. Five seconds remaining. I think he could have maybe worked better almost for Finstack than he would have for Nuclear. Reserve because time. if you get yeah, <laughs> you get the Kunkka. Uh, if you catch out the Weaver with with the lasso, that's very much a dead Weaver. Mm. So, but this way around, who's his target? 
Radiance Who's the targets of the bat rider? Has to be Trixie almost. Yeah, I should think they're just going to jump onto Trixie on the Nature's Prophet. It's going to be the easiest way to try to deal with it. Yeah. Because the Razor probably won't be able to burst down. The Death Prophet gets pretty tanky. Yeah. I, I, th I think those are, are a bit harder to burst down. Mm. Well, it's going to be very hard to burst any of them down when that boat is on the field anyway. Yeah. But let's quickly And the disruption the as well. The disruption already sort of counters the uh the bat rider. If you have good good uh reflexes on that one. Very true. It's one of the best ways to stop the uh, victim of the bat rider taking too much damage before the disruption ends. But uh, yep. for all intents and purposes, we have Jerax playing that Kunker. We have Trixie on the Nature's Prophet. We have on the Shadow Shaman Suclis. On the Razor, Fraggy, once again, I believe this is three times in this tournament so far out of the four games that Finstack have played. And finally, over on the Death Prophet in the mid lane, we have Rexy. The flip side of this coin, however, in the mid lane, we have ML Whisper on that Batrider. On the Skyrath Mage, we have Delhi once more. I believe this is the second time we've seen him play the Skyrath. On the Weaver in the off lane, we have Smamus, and it's going to come down to how quickly he can come online with this one, because otherwise it could be a very rough game in the next 20 or so minutes for Nuclear Gandhi. On the Venomancer, the who's taking begins. that core on the top lane, we've got Utka. And finally, we have Abaddon, who's going to be backing up that Weaver on the off lane, and that's played by Hartwell. Yeah. I think early on, the a lot of the pressure is going to be on the uh, roaming supports from Finstack. Mm. It's not the easiest combo to run. Like, it, it's a very classical combo but the fact that the conca has to be a support that makes it a lot more like if you if you fail to find kills it's, it's going to be a lot worse heavily. yeah and of course you're going to have less damage due to it being a support conca yeah but we're opting for that level one torrent we've already got the combo available and trixie being harassed back and but it is by delhi here and delhi does have a haste they do need to be careful at yeah. this point, since Delhi is the squishiest target and the easiest target right now. Pings are going out. They want to potentially go on this, but that haste rune is causing far too much. They're going to get the disruption. Cancels at last second, but I think he got it fogged. Yeah. And on that note, just it's going to be Trixie farming up as best he can against the, uh, the Venomancer. As a, as a matchup, how is that lane? Well, I, I expect Trixie likes to go for the early uh, Orb of Venom on his Furion, actually. And I think that could be actually pretty decent against the Venomancer. Indeed, Venomancer does not Bit have more harassment speed. Yeah. And if he can just use his Treant to, uh, to harass and get a bit more extra from the uh, Orb of Venom. And Mid lane, however, we do get a disruption going on to ML Whisper, but no Torrent to follow it up. Yeah. I, I'm, not, I'm not actually sure why they decided to hold back that. So in my own mind, they could have dropped the torrent and then they could have put some more aggression on the board. Maybe got Rex to the first blood. Yeah, and any disruptions that you waste, like you have a limited amount of mana still, and it's not that expensive, but it's not it's not as bad as wasting fissures with with uh, Earthshaker, like. I, I want to see every every disruption count, mm. sort of. If I if I recall my math correctly, you can get uh, three disruption plus soul catcher combos in your initial mana pool. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, and he's got he's got one clarity, so that helps a bit, but still. Mm. But it is going to certainly start impacting Jerex and Suclus if they cannot start getting these kills on the supports. These supports are the type that require kills. It's not an option. They can't just stack and pull the jungle. Well, Suclus can, but Jerex can't. Craig is holding up really well on the bot lane, by the way. Indeed he is. He's used his, all his uh, health regen now, though, so anything yeah. from here he's going to need to order in. He's forcing back uh, Smamus a little more than I thought he would, considering the, li the line of... Um, an Abaddon plus a Weaver is always going to be effective. It's a very scary combination when you think about it. Yeah, that's what I was thinking as well. That it is, it is a pot potentially really, really nasty lane. Mm. It's uh, in my mind 
the next level up from the original iteration of the Let's Protect the Weaver of Weaver and Tree and Protector. Yeah, definitely. With more burst damage, of course, when you consider a Fothic Shield. Yeah. But at the same time, I don't know. We this, do get this is the, the initiation of that lane. The torrent is there. And Hartwell will be the victim of this inch. Comes Trixie with a TP as well, and Jerax will draw that first blood. That was important for Jerax. Really, really important. He can get his boots now, and indeed, and he that's going to make the map mean so much more. for him. Smamus could be the next target, though. There is a sentry down. He's Radiance pretty much downright standing on it. Attack. This could be very rough for him should this go the wrong way. No, he's going to be able to just walk out of this one. But in comes the first push of the Nathiel and Tower, and that's where the Nature's Prophet rotation in. He already has his phase boot, so he's not exactly hitting for a small amount of damage. He's nearly hitting for, well, he's hitting for uh, 77 damage. No, more than that, 87 damage. What am I on about? But this will fall in a very short order unless we get some rotations in to hold this. And the sentry down, the sentry ward that was down, which has actually expired now, was going to punish Mammoth, but he's just going to come in and continue to harass with Saguchi. Now, in comes ML Whisper. The disruption is there, though. Are they going to turn for the torrent? No, they're not. Jax is just going to TP out. Uh, the torrent will keep him alive for that second that he needs to escape. Now Trixie needs to get the hell out of here. They do get a counter kill on both Rexy, uh, on both the uh, Braggy, sorry, and Suquiz. They even oh. get the triple here. They even manage to bring down Trixie. So a little bit of overaggression. They lose to heroes but gain a tier one. So yeah, and Ochre is slightly pushing the tier difference. one at the top lane at the same time. So yeah. This is the downside. Trixie leaves the lane and suddenly yeah. the wards are down. And these are level, let's take a look here, three wards. They're not going to be able to be killed very quickly. And Jerax needs to be very careful. Oh. He could potentially fall here. This is quite easily going to be a kill if Uka just throws one more right click. Hell, this ward might be able to do it more than enough. The disruption is there. They can't follow up with the torrent, considering how low HP is. But in comes Trixie, who's going to come in with that right click and the sprout. Should be enough to bring down Uka at this point in. And down goes that Venomancer. Yeah. Did Jerax actually survive that one? Yes, he did. Yeah, barely. Mm. It was a very close one. I was honestly surprised that Uka didn't dive it just for the sake of getting the kill. But again, that is a support. It's not going to be very favorable for him when... The experience from him dying gets given away for a dive. Yeah. It's going to be interesting to see. Trixie went for those face boots first. Um, if he wants that orb of venom, this, I think he would have already picked it up. So I think that might be a signal that he's going for something else instead. Well, to an extent, the orb of venom loses some of its effectiveness in this game. Yeah. You consider that he's got the dust. Why has he got the dust? There's a Weaver. Weaver Saguchi is, is max move speed regardless. Yeah. So the Orb of Venom is less effective, and now the things go on. Yeah, and, and he's also showing that he wants to be a lot more active with mm. that. Well, now they're going to potentially go for Suclus here. The torrent is coming in, though. Do we have the disruption? Yes, we do, which is going to force the torrent to not connect. But now it's going to be more than enough right click to bring down Suclus, and that's another kill going the way of the Bat Rider. So that's yeah, two zero th one. This is bat. this is one of those games where Batrider can absolutely get out of control with this kind of start. Indeed. Early blink dagger, four stuff is all you need on Bat to make it viable. From there, anything you get is complete luxury. I still think the Razor and the Death Prophet can be really difficult to deal with. But they are they're having a they're having they're farming well. The it Razor is. has a death to his name and neither has gotten any kills yet, so but now we have a stack going the way of Rexy, and this is going to give him a nice burst of gold should he have enough mana to keep Crip Swarming with that bottle. He certainly will with just a little bit off the courier. So Smarm is diving at the bottom lane. Uh, indeed he is, but can Fraggy get the kill? I don't think they've got any detection nah, he here. All his damage was stolen as well. He so already he used his right plasma click. field, so... Uh, and Smamus is going to be safe, so he's all good. In the meantime, mid lane, Jarax needs to be very careful here as he's silenced up. He could potentially take a fall, and with a couple of right clicks from Emma Whisper, that's going to be more than enough. But in comes Fraggy, trying to right click and defend this. The plasma field, not going to be enough, not even with the tower strike, and Emma Whisper is going to TP out to home. Doesn't even want to risk dying here. And back in this mid lane, Fraggy's going to take the farm now and try to stop this push. They're getting kills and they're forcing reactions, so they're certainly doing what they need. <laughs> Nuclear Gandhi, as we said, have the capacity to take a game from Finstack. It is well within their ability. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's good to see that they're so confident. Let's say. Yes, indeed, I, I would agree with that. Confidence is one of the biggest yeah. things going into these given, games. Given given how badly the first game went for them, this is really really surprising to see that they're 
really taking it to Finstack this early. Well, the the ability to punish this Conquer. The Conquer is currently 1-1-1. One, one, and one. I think you and I would both agree. For a Conquer Shadow Demon combo, we expect more kills. Yeah. Yeah, they, they need to... The Shadow Demon... It also, like, they missed that disruption into Torrent. And that, that, that sort of... It's easy to do if you haven't practiced that combo enough. So... It's, it's unforgiving. Well, on, for Jerax, we do have level 4 of Elkin, so he's not going to have his boat for any time soon. Smamus is going to potentially go down here. In comes Trixie with that uh, rotation, and Abaddon will be the main target. The easy kill there on him as well, but Smamus is going to TP away to safety. It's rotations like this that we need to see more of from Finstack, just coming in with Trixie, just going for the kill with the Sprout. Ideally, more kills on this Abaddon before they can hit 6 if possible, since once they have that... Uh, borrowed time, it's going to be so much harder to bring him down in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. Meantime, on the top line, Utka continuing to push this in, but now we've got the torrent landing, and Fraggy is here, plus Super Nuna. That's going to be a very dead Venomancer. However, he did get his ult off, and just look how much damage Supus is taking. One more right click, and that's going to be the death of a Shadow Demon. However, it's a core Venomancer for a support Shadow Demon, and nearly a tier one. Is this in deny range? Off by eight. Very, very close to being in deny range. Yeah. So mid lane, we get another fight going on. Rexy tethered, lassoed, and brought back into the tower. That's going to be a kill going the way of Nuclear Gandhi. And the big problem is that they're not finding kills. Or the Bat Rider is, is staying alive, and the we Weaver is staying alive, and they're both going to have a lot bigger impact very soon. Well, now we've got that Blink Dagger Rail yeah. for ML Whisper, as well as a Haste Rune. This is, this is going to be perfect going into the next fight. The next fight they take is they're going to have such an advantage with in terms of isolating and bringing yeah, one exactly. hero out. And ideally, they're going to want to bring down, I should think, the um, Nature's Prophet of Trixie. Yeah, probably. What else do we have going across this map? Let's bring up the items tab and take a quick look. We've got a Yules coming up for Rexy. That's going to help him out in terms of his own survivability. For Fraggy, I should think we're going to be seeing the um, all-important Aghanim set the next on him. We have a Midas present on Trixie, so he's going for that slightly more greedy build. And they're coming in to push this top tier one with all of their force. And Jerax is trying to play the complete support role, Kunker, which he is level 6 now, so he's going to have the b added boat and stun combo Dyer's to add in. But now, with Exorcism attack. popped, Trixie's Dyer's presence, we force the fortification. Do we have rotation in from supports? Jerax and Suklas are nearby. This could certainly be a good fight. Yeah, it's difficult when you don't have the wards already set up. Very true. And they're, they're pretty much just... Setting up for a backstab here, I think. Indeed. Yeah. In comes the boat. This is a pretty big one as well. It's going to connect on two, isolating and destroying the Skyrath Mage and almost ML Whisper. We equally have a disruption on the back line. They're going to target Hartwell and bring him down. He still does not have his borrowed time. So that, you know, he does have it, but it was expended quite early in that fight. So that's going to be three kills going the way of the pin stack. Yeah, that, that was a poor decision to take that fight. Well, TPing into they, a tower like that when there's a Conqueror around is a rough idea either way. Yeah, and like, if the Venom Master had been the first on the scene and had be been able to set up his portion of the fight, that would have been a lot better position to take it from, but I don't know. Rough either way, and in the meantime, Spamus does and get And also the fact that the Bat Rider wasn't there, you didn't get someone pulled out of position right at that start of the fight. Indeed. Well, we can you, see you need the Bat Rider right now. We can see Smamus getting uh, harassed out of lane here on that bot lane. They need uh, the rotations a little bit more effectively, I think, in this game. Uh, we're getting some crackling on the mic. I'm not sure what's causing that. Bat Rider's looking for Trixie, but Trixie TP is out. In the meantime, we've got ML Whisper on with that Viz rune on that... Uh, oh, sorry, with that smoke on the bot lane looking for the jump in are they going to find anyone with this uh, smoke potentially are we going to see any reactions from the fin stack i think they're just they want to be aggressive but they aren't finding anyone from fin stack mm, indeed they're just uh, sitting back a bit and we're still getting Trixie's farming his own his own jungle and yeah 
playing it fairly safe. Uh, in the meantime, we've got Fraggy on that uh, on that bot lane. He's got a buckler, and with that buckler, that's going to be the mechanism in about 750 gold. There's going They're to be smoking at the top. Some, uh, some aggression here. Smoking towards the top. Smoking towards the top, but on the bottom lane, we also had uh, Emma Whisper being forced to use his Firefly and just get away from the Razor. Yep. Considering the damage being stolen, it was a necessary thing to happen as well. For uh, Smamus, yeah, for Smamus, we've also got a Ring of Health, so he's going to be looking for that. Uh, in my mind, uh, are we going to see a Lincolns in this game? Is, um, is this what I think that's like pretty, pretty standard, I guess. But what's going, the Lincolns actually going to stop? Is now we get the combo coming in. So much damage onto Smamus in one right click. Time lapse is there. He's back on full HP, but he is dusted now with the disruption. They need to get the kill on Smamus. They need another stun. The purge. Did get fogged. They, he didn't get the uh, purge off in time, but now that's going to be an easy kill. With, actually, the purge did go off. A lot of that would have been stopped by Lincolns. A lot of that would have been stopped by Lincolns, yes. Um, it would have stopped the X, it would have stopped the purge, it would have stopped the disruption, I suppose. Yes, Lincolns is going to be the right choice here. Yeah. Uh, uh, for Trixie, in the meantime, he does have his Necro 1 available, as well as going to continue me. pushing this top lane. From here on in, it's going to be most likely going towards this tier two, and with this tier two, it's going to force a fight. And Emma Whispers already getting into position for this one. He wants to come in. He wants to find Trixie, and Trixie's going to be the main target. But he is revealed out by the sentry that was dropped for the Weaver, and everyone TPs away. They don't want to risk getting caught. And Jerax Hut lurking around with Zuclus. They do have the boat in two seconds. This could be a one hell of a fight for these two supports if they can get the level, especially with Fraggy's presence. We do get a disruption onto Smamus, and now, here we go, fight kicks off in full. Fraggy stealing damage from Emma Whisper the entire time. Boat comes in across the top, going to completely miss, but it's the buff that matches. Jerax is going to safely be able to TP out here. Fraggy does have the buff, and he is slowed out completely by the Venom monster. He brings down the Veno, but now we're trading into Smamus. Smamus is going to be forced to time-lapse this one, and we get borrowed time trigger on Hartwell. However, he should be fine, but Rexy will burst him down with so much damage. Yeah, and if the Bat Rider isn't there, there's a distinct lack of stuns here. So, Jerax was, was able to just TP out of that fight. The Shadow Demon, he was in a bit of a bad position. He just TP'd out of the fight at the start. Indeed, in the meantime, we've got a push going on to this mid lane. But in comes Emma Whisper. He gets Yuled up that second, though. The Mystic Flare will have it be enough to bring down Jerax. And now we get the potential going to Trixie here. They need to bring him down one more uh, Arcane Bolt from the Skyrath. is more than enough to clean that up. So a double kill for Delic. Now looking for Rexy, however, Rexy's going to be far too tangy. But in the meantime, the Weaver does manage to bring down that pesky Shadow Demon. However, Delic will go down to Friggy, uh, Fraggy when he uh, TPs back in. And the brawl never ends, does it, Sun Tzu? <laughs> Well, these lineups, they have a lot of sustain, so... Indeed, they the do. The abandon is pretty much just sustain and walking or on a horse. Dyer's Part of me wonders, um, what, what do you think about a value point into Curse of Avernus? It can do... It can work out fairly nice. I don't know if he gets to... Uh, if he gets to strike enough... If he gets Dyer's right click enough. Has True, if he can get into the fight from right click, but it, that means he's going to be damage sponging the front line with his borrowed time, which means he could get burst down quicker, sure. But yeah. Curse of Avernus is quite a big movement speed and attack speed swing if he starts to get some points in it. Yeah. And not only is it a, uh, a debuff on the enemy, it's a buff for his team if they right click the victim of it. I do attack. sort of expect him to. Uh, Max out the coil first, though. Mm. Coil, of course, for the healing presence. Yeah, least. yeah. I mean, that that sort of feels like his role in this. He's just a walking coil and shield machine. Mm. Indeed, indeed. And uh, item-wise, on that uh, on that support, Abaddon. Are you expecting to see uh, the pipe on him, or at least arcanes, I should think? Considering we already have, I believe, a uh, a mechanism present on the Venomancer. Yes, we do. The arcanes are going to do good work. They're all, they've already got two arcanes on the on the team, though. So maybe maybe you can hold on to those brown boots for a bit longer. Go for something. Yeah, maybe the pipe. Maybe the pipe first. Well, we'll that's also two. that's that's a lot of gold for a support a bad one to uh, get. We'll take a quick look at the uh, the graphs while we've got a lot in the action at the 18-minute mark. 
We've got about a thousand experience lead in favor of the Finstack, so nothing staggering there, and it's actually come down from what was a 3k lead. Now also is going to be the victim of this potential gank, but in comes the uh, mech usage. But the boat is there, it's going to catch up the Hartwell. That props for a time, and they equally bring down the Venomancer with the extra damage coming in from Dragon. They're just going to manage to obliterate both heroes on this lane. They do get TP reactions, but it's too little, too late. The tier 2 will fall under the presence of this exorcism, and well. This is the strength of the push line up coming out of Finster. They yeah. take the fight, they kill attack. one or two. The boat is there Radiant's for the stun, tower. you've got Torrent as well, and then they can just take Dyer's the tower off the back of that. UK Gandhi can't fight into this 3v5. Yeah, the downside is that as soon as these ultimates run out, they're going to be a lot more open to being initiated on. And they will manage to find a kill on the Weaver there as well, which is pretty damn big if you think yeah, about it. The, the that, Weaver gets the tower, that's the important thing in this stuff. That was a bit of, it, it's a bit of lack of patience in general. They should have probably waited to get the Venomancer and the Abaddon back up before they went in and tried to get more kills. Right, let's take a quick look at the gold graph. It's only uh, about a 9k lead in favor of the Finstack right now, so... It's still completely recoverable. 10,000 gold, as we saw yesterday, is absolutely nothing to these teams. Yeah. 10,000 gold lead was over Kane yesterday. Yeah. But net worth-wise, you've got a 10k net worth onto Trixie, a 8.6k net worth onto Rexy. So the two big cores for Finstack are certainly online and ready to fight. Frag is not that far behind. I honestly expected him to have a, a little bit more than he did, though. But he was heavily delayed. He didn't get that mechanism as early as we have seen in previous games. He only finished that about a minute and a half ago. Yeah, he's been a lot more involved in fights. And that has worked out for him sometimes. And other times, he's just gotten killed off and not done that much. Mm, uh, but definitely, like, it's a 9k gold lead. Uh, but... And a lot of it is the towers. They've they're three towers up, but that still that still says that they're farming very efficiently. And uh, Trixie's all always if he's not fighting, he's in the jungle as he is right now. He's got that Midas, and he's just farming away, being Indeed. that profit. Well, now we've got the pressure going on to this tier two in the mid lane. What ults do we have available for all these teams? Everything is available. So. Yeah. Potentially exorcism to push this tower, but equally we could have a jump in from Emma Whisper trying to catch out the Death Prophet or uh, or Fraggy on this one. Who do you go on though? Trix is going to be the target, he's going to be forced up. Out and looks to be isolated. The Skyrath Mage also does drop, but it doesn't connect with its full damage potential. In comes the boat onto two. Emma Whisper's going to take a fall as well as the Weaver. This is the two big pause for Nuclear Guardian down, and now they're going to find Utka as well on the back foot near enough. One more right click coming through from Rexy, it's not going to be enough, they need a couple more hits, a couple more bits of damage, but a buyback from Emma Whisper, he wants to get involved in this fight, are they going to be able to kill Rexy for his sins, yes they are, he got far too aggressive, and Utka gets a double kill with those dots. Yeah, I think Nuclear Gaming got more than they should have in that fight, uh, the problem with jumping on the Furion, he's, I mean, he is the target that you have to go for, but he's going to have the buyback, and he could have just gotten back into the fight the fact that his team dove before he came back in that was a misplay they they shouldn't have do dove like that Indeed. it's not worth chasing those kills the tower is the, the objective and as long as there are towers standing as long as there are barracks standing don't chase for those kills man but as, as said by many casters oh, kills mean nothing towers yeah. mean everything yeah objective gaming yeah, and I, I don't know. This is a team that, on some level, they do get carried away. So, hopefully they can keep it in check. And well, they do like stone. to be aggressive, but they, uh, then again, you see these players in any other team, they're equally as aggressive. It's not just when they're together. They, these guys, they yeah. love to fight. Yeah. Which does make for some epic games, but tactically, it may not be the right decision. And Rex gets that bloodstone, so next time when he uh, decides to feed away himself, <laughs> at least he'll be back up a bit earlier. Uh, <laughs> I suppose, uh, I suppose, I suppose. Equally, though, mid lane is still going to be the target here for the Finstack. They need to bring down this tier two. He's, he's starting to get really difficult to kill off. Indeed, the he's Yules got the Yules, he's yeah. got the bloodstone, the regen is there. 1600 health, and now they're just going to siege this with a level 2 exorcism. 
and this time they are going for the tower. The fortification is popped, so they're going to have five minutes after this goes down where they can freely push without threat of that fort stopping this. But can Nuclear Gandhi hold this off? We have the Venomancer with his ultimate available. He's going to be building most likely towards that Aghanim, which is going to make that ult even more threatening. But in comes all of the damage necessary. And Fraggy is going to be looking for that Aghanim next, so that's going to make the push all that more scary. In come the TPs. Smamus wants to get involved, but look how many sentries have been dropped by the Fin stack. If he goes forward, he's going to die. Yeah. Equally, in the meantime, we do have the Necro split push coming in from Trixie. So Nature's Prophet living up to his namesake of being the Nature's Rat. Yeah, and that, that's... Trixie is all over the place. Like, when that fight was happening at mid, or when they were pushing the tower at mid, Smalmus was trying to split push at the, uh, at the top lane. And Trixie just TP'd in there and forced him off that. And at the same, at the same time, as I said, he was still able to push in the bottom lane. So he's, he's being way too, uh, way too slippery for nuclear gaming to deal with right now. Well, that's what Nature's Prophet has a tendency of being. Yeah. Without any way to lock him down, without the presence of the, of the Bat Riders to grab him when he decides to appear on lane, it's very hard to stop him. And considering we have a Necro 3, his push is all that more scary. It's only going to get worse from here, though. He's most likely going to go for, with this amount of gold, a Desolator or a Sheep Stick are both good options here. Or Mjolnir. Or Mjolnir, of course. But uh, Desolator for the extra negative armor to go with uh, Fraggy and with the uh, Exorcism for Rex, it seems like tactically yeah. possibly the best idea. You can yeah, see them I, 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 could see, I could see him going for the Mjolnir just so he can solo split push a bit better. And they're going to find Delhi. The boat's not going to connect, but they can chase this. They've got the buff now for a good few seconds. Can they finish off Delhi? No, they can't. Equally, though, they do catch Hartwell. They've still got this for a time, though, and that's going to pop. Force them back into the base, though, and they should just be able to turn back and get the tower, which is already cleaned up by Trixie. At least Trixie is playing the objective. Yeah, well, he's he's very good at that, at that fury on him. He knows what he wants. And that's another tier two that falls in favor. But in comes an old whisper. He manages to grab Rexy. And now the potential fight. There comes the Ewell. So it's going to stop the Mystic Clef from doing all that much damage. But Rexy still could fall here. The mech's pop. Disruption is there. And in comes Smamus. He wants to try to get involved with this. And Smamus doesn't have that much damage. He still doesn't have a link. So they will be able to bring down the Death Prophet. And now we get a torrent. Potentially going to come in for ML Whisper. Kunkka, Jerex trying to finish off ML, but it's not going to be enough. A second boat flies through. Not going to connect again, but the buff is once again there. Going to buy them time now. Trixie right clicking away. There is no more borrowed time for Hartwell. He needs to get killed off here, but he survives. They're going to turn and try to get this fight, though. Smamus going to be the one right clicking down. He gets the courier, more importantly, and now Jerex is going to be the victim. Can they find Trixie? No, they can't. Borrow time up again and triple kill for Utka. All the dots in the world. More dots. <sighs> what? Don't look at me like that, Sun Tzu. No more dots. No. More dots. More dots. No more dots. Equally, though, for uh, for Utka, he does have, flying out to him on the Courier, a full Aghanim Scepter. So those dots just got more powerful. There will yeah. be more dots. Yeah. But, like, you can see in that fight, even with Rexy getting caught up like that, he was insanely tanky. If they just take the fights properly... There's no way you can take that. You, there's no way you can kill off that Death Prophet. Mm. And we were actually both wrong. He opted for the Orchid Malevolence instead oh. of either of what we thought would be the... the uh, That's interesting. Up. It gives him a little more brawl. And they're going to look for Utka here, but yeah. he should be able to TP out completely safe. However, pings are coming out. Emma Whisper wants to go for the jump on Trixie. Trixie needs to fall back pretty damn fast, and he should be able to escape this one. Then again, Emma Whisper is very quick right now, and in comes the sticky napalm, trying to slow this down, trying to catch that pesky rat. And with the with the grab, but in comes uh, the Yule, the orchid use, and that's going to keep uh, Emma Whisper from lassoing him, and he's going to TP out safely. Yeah. Again, that's a pretty damn good uh, use of the item, in all honesty, stopping him from being grabbed by uh, the pesky bat rider. Yeah, but it's a bit surprising. If he wants to use that as a cover for him to split push, I think the Blink Dagger could have done almost the same job. To an extent, yes, I'd agree. Yeah. However, all it takes is a rogue um, a rogue flame break to break that ability to Blink Dagger away. Yeah, yeah. You need to be more proactive about it. You need to back off before you, before you see them coming. Mm. So... But he's generally pretty good at that, so... 
In the meantime, Batrider did pop, I believe that was an Invis rune from his bottle, but it, he immediately the sentries dropped. The Finstack being so very careful with their aggression at this point. But in the meantime, Rexy, does he have another exorcism available in uh, in 80 seconds? So, well, yeah. we're going to see itemize on him next. We've got a Necro book coming online. Hell, let's bring up the tab. Let's see what's coming up across the board. More Fraggy push. has himself that agonim. So more push. That is the order of business in this game. Actually, more not quite. He needs 800 gold. So. Oh yeah, he's missing the, um, the stuff of wizardry. Yep. Still not far off. 800 is very small beans in terms yep. of the grand scheme of this game. Suklamuna, however, he could be going for. A urn could be the option here. Yeah, a, I'm uh, pretty sure that's an urn. Yeah, an urn's going to help him out at least in terms of uh, sustain for his team. It's a bit surprising that they don't, haven't gotten an urn before this, given that they they have the run that kind of yeah. combo. Yeah, and you've seen how aggressively Trixie's been TPing onto lanes, and now we yeah, exactly. tend to see the kill on Smamus. Can they get the, the finishing hit? No, they can't. And the orchid, the burst is not going to be anywhere near enough. But now we have the potential jumping from Memo Whisper. He doesn't jump long enough. There's too short a range. And now we can potentially see the turnaround and punish here. In comes the boat. It's going to stun. Out on one. Only ML. Everyone else is completely safe. But Hartwell will be able to dispel that pesky little stun with the uh, aphotic shield, of course. Yeah. If neither team finds quite the right initiation, it's probably going to end up a lot like this. Indeed. At it least this is what they what they both should do in that position. Just back off and reset. And I think they seem to be going for the Roshan now instead of Finstack. Mm. Or well, Roshan they need to be very careful with considering the Batrider can come in over the top and cause all manner of problems here. I think they could have... Uh, they're just threatening the Roshan. True, but still, this is a fight on dire yeah. high ground. This is going to be very rough for the Finstack. Then again, the wards are here. Sentries for both sides. There's going to be no invisible little tricks here. And they ping out ML. They know he's here. The Nature's Prophet ult jumping around as well. Hell, Treants to even reveal everything. There's no hiding here from the eyes of the Finstack, it seems. Indeed. Equally, though, you've got Trixie threatening the top lane, and he's going to continue to split push as much as he likes. And honestly, this stalemate near the Roche pit is costing uh, Nuclear Gandhi time. Quite a bit of time, considering the threat that Trixie always poses. The threat yeah. of nature's profit. And essentially, they're never going to be able to take that, that Roshan fight, because they can't fight really into the uh, Razor and DP ultimates. And at the same time, if they try to go in there as five, Trixie's just going to take your base. Indeed, but now so, you do get the uh, Aegis going the way of uh, of the Radiant, and we get a boat going to connect on two, including Utka, the core Venomancer here. But now we get the Yules up and the grab back, but disruption there to defend Jerax for that little bit of time necessary. Utka, however, will take a fall here on that Venomancer, and they will be able to now go for ML Whisper, who's purged up and will potentially be brought down with this one. However, uh, on the back row of this one, they're losing everyone. What oh. the hell happened in the back? What did I just miss? I no idea. That that's surprising. That was really. The they got split up and they were really over aggressive on that one. I I know. I was following. Uh, I was following Fraggy in the attempts on ML Whisper, but there was just too much damage. I'm guessing it was a combine of the fire and the dots coming out of the Venomancer. Yeah. Did the Venomancer get his Gale off? Yes, he did. And that was with a that was with an axe. That's where the damage came from. Huh. Okay. Yeah, I, I guess that softens it up nicely for the Weaver as well. He's, he's not doing that much damage yet, but he's very mobile and he's very much able to kite in and out well, on those back lines. We are getting to this point. We're getting to that 35 minute mark that I mentioned previously. And ML Whisper is going to potentially go down here. He is purged up. I doubt he's going to be able to escape this one, and down goes the Batrider. Equally, though, can we see a potential chase? Jer actually wants to get involved with more. Five seconds to X marks the spot. He does have that boat. Torrent's almost up as well. Ewell's is there from Rexy, and this is potentially going to be a very dead Abaddon. However, Smamus is here on the Weaver as well. He doesn't want to get involved with this one. And can they find the kill on Hartwell? Surely they can. The, uh, the borrowed time is now over. Disruption is there. This is going to be a very dead Abaddon. But in comes the boat. Are they going to be able to catch anyone? They're going to hit Utka with the boat. And now they can potentially chase this. Then again, no. They're going to decide, no, let's reset. Let's pick up the uh, Weaver of Smamus instead. A couple more right clicks will be all it takes. Is there enough with the, the Orchid Burst? No, there isn't. A couple more right clicks, however, and there could be. But he's going to be able to just keep scooching out of this one now, surely. 
And he's just going to time lapse back into, oh, almost into Rexy. That was uh, quite lucky there on Slamus's part. Yeah. And the Orchid on Trixie, it's probably just for the Weaver, and or that's the intent of it. Indeed. I can, but I can as, see as you can see there, it's. He's still very slippery. He's still very hard to kill. Well, the urn from Sukus, as we mentioned earlier, is going to pay off as Jarrett gets healed up. We get the X Mark spot onto Utka. We have the boat combo. No, it's going to be a torrent, and that should be enough. And in comes Rex with that X and the right clicks there. They're going to try to shred these, these set of racks, and they're going to lose the Venomance Forest, who's going to immediately buy back. He does have his ult, so we could see that. Pet, that huge amount of damage coming through from the uh, Venomancer dot, and in comes the boat. This could be good. They're going to bring back Jax into the base harbor with that lasso, and even under the Mystic Flare, he's not going to be able to survive, not going to be able to escape, and they do bring down Jerax. Now, Rexy is going to move back, reset. He does get an Invis room. They brought down Jerax in exchange for what is a ranged Rax, so equally yeah. not in Nuclear Gandhi's favor, and... In my mind, Nuclear Gandhi are still on the clock. They need more damage. They need this Weaver to come online. We're getting to that 35-minute mark, and he's still missing that Desolator. He needs that for right-click. And Rexy is right here. He can drop the Silence. They could fight here. And in comes Trixie. The Silence is there. Are they going to be able to find him in time? That's the question. They're not going to be able to sprout him in due to the use of the Lincolns there. And now can we get the turnaround? They're going to go on to Trixie here. The Gale is there. He's going to be slowed up and brought down. A couple more right-clicks. Down goes Trixie, the Nature's Prophet. Not going to be able to come back in this fight. Does he have a buyback? We may as well bring up buyback status now to keep an eye on things. No, he does not have a buyback. And he I, trade I don't, for trade. This is, I uh, don't know why they're fighting, though. Like, Finstack can just... If they just wait and reset their ultimates, they can... Each time when they have their ultimates up, they can just take a, take a fight in the base. And now in comes the boat. Is it going to connect to the ML? It will. They have the damage, but they, the cliff is in the way here. The cliff is the big problem. They can't chase the Batrider down that damn cliff. And now we've got Nuclear Gandhi wanting to reset. They don't have borrowed time. What do we have coming up on Heartwell? He's got an urn. He's got uh, Arcanes. Hmm. On this, on the, in this game, especially, I'd actually say, um, for Heartwell, a Aghanims would be a miss on the Abaddon, considering how much damage it would soak for his team. Yeah, but I think that's also a mistake that Finstack have been making. They've actually gone on the Abaddon. I don't think, I don't think the uh, Mist Coil and the Shield are quite powerful enough to uh, that, that you'd want to burst, try and burst him down. But you can't burst him down. You can yeah, never no, no, burst no, him down. No, you can't burst him down, but you can sort of ignore him. You can, even with the Coil and the Shield, you can probably get through some of the weaker targets on that team. I'd agree. Ignoring the Abaddon for now sounds like a good idea. Because if they commit the time... Hell, yeah. What level uh, um, borrow time is this? Level 2 borrow time. So that's four seconds where if, they're, if they want to bring him down, they're going to have to force the, force the borrow time, wait the borrow time out, then finish him off. Yeah. That, that's not something you want to be committing in terms of a fight. You want to bring down, if they can, the Weaver. And the Weaver's going to be the main target here. He has it up, but he will manage to time lapse out. Are they going to be able to bring him down? I don't think so. But in comes the boat, the torrent, the combo onto Utka. And now he is going to be the focus fire. But in the meantime, you've got Emma Whisper bringing back Fraggy, who's got the Eye of the Storm up, but it's not going to be anywhere near enough. Rexy on a killing spree. But equally, you've got Abaddon doing work, bringing down that Razor. Now they're looking for Jarex, but he's going to TP out. They're not going to be able to stop this one. The fact that they're able to fo force those fights outside of the base instead of on their own high ground at tier threes, that's that's a big win for them. Indeed it is. And uh, it, it just it just means that Finstack just used their ultimates and they got no damage on the base. Mm. And, and they got nothing objective wise either. That's yeah. the most important thing. No yeah. objectives like are being harmed. E even even if they like if they were were to have lost that fight at the base, they would have at least taken a portion of the tower down, and it would have been easier for them to come back next time and progressively just take it take it down bit by bit. Indeed, but uh, let's take a quick look at across the board, items wise and um, graphs wise. We've almost got that Daedalus up for Smamus, which, uh, not Daedalus, sorry, um, Desolate up for Smamus, which is going to help him out tenfold. Once he's got that damage online, this Weaver is going to be downright scary, and I think both of you and me agree on that one. Yeah. Yeah. And for, um, let's just bring up the tab here. We've got the Necro 3 online for Trixie, of course. We've got potentially uh, could be built into a pipe for Jerex. He's got the cloak if he's going to take that further. That'll be an interesting one. A pipe is certainly needed with that Venomancer with an Agonims online. 
Uh, for Suquis, I don't know where he's going to go from here. Most likely for some more survivability of some description. Maybe even a drum for his team. That one. Yeah, they're drums. still missing a drum, so that yeah. could be very good. The, for uh, Rexy, upgrading into Boots of Travel seems like a good idea on uh, on. Nah, he's going. Side. He's going BKB first. BKB first, you reckon? Yeah, I, yeah. yeah true. Um, BKB first into the same call is coming out from the Razor. He's going to go BKB as well, and yep. uh, yep. Trixie, he's he's got the Maelstrom as well that we were talking about earlier, and he's going to probably complete the Mjolnir. Very true. And in the meantime, for Nuclear Gandhi, they've got that Desolator now. For Uka, they have the Agonims. They have the um, the oh. uh, mechanism. From here, I should think we're going to be looking for a sheep stick up for Uka. For Hartwell, Blade Mail certainly comes to mind. They've got their, all their big tools coming online to take these fights. and yeah, They're at the point where they're all online. They have the damage on the Weaver. They have the initiation. They have the sustain from Hartwell. What more do you think Nuclear Gandhi need to start threatening Finstack space? I think that's quite a ways off. For the, for the time being, what they need, they just need to keep this game going and allow that weaver to get big and hope that that's enough but i'm i'm not sure if it is it, like in in the really late game that's mm. still going to be a really tough a really tough deal to uh try and out out dps both the death prophet and the razor and very true and like trixie's going to probably at some point pick up an mkb and such in comes top lane, ML Whisper threatening Jerax here, and now in comes Trixie potentially? No, just threatening. Uh, yeah. no. A little bit of a uh, little bit of poking and prodding in terms of. Once aggression. Trixie starts to uh, pick up more right-click items, he also becomes a very very strong presence. So very true. The Nature's Prophet is one of the nastier heroes in the late game, considering the ability to threaten it. We can see most likely a Desolator on him coming up at some point. The uh, Molnir, as you have mentioned. Yeah. We could even see a Sheep Stick, which still we're missing across the board. We have no Sheep Sticks at all in this game. Yeah, then the Sheep Stick would, would be good against the Weaver. But at the same time, if you've already got the Orchid against the Weaver, are you going to build both? Yeah, that is a good question. Um, I'm, I keep looking at the Skywrath Mage. He's got the Ghost Scepter in his inventory. And it's a bit of a gimmicky, gimmicky choice, and it's a ways off. But he could get the shotgun. He could go for a F blade, very true. Yeah. But equally, does he really want the F blade when he needs some well, form of? It would give him a way to absolutely burst down someone. True, he could shotgun and burst someone. But equally, you have to keep in mind his survivability is not huge at this minute. He's got the four stuff to try to get out of fights. But let's say the boat connects. You got the torrent. You have the magic damage coming through from the death prophet as well as plasma field. You're going to need some form of magic immunity. A BKB, in my mind, would be a, a good choice here for the Skyrath, just to sustain him in these fights. Yeah, but if he if he wanted the BKB, what he probably wouldn't have gone for Ghost Scepter. Very true. They are um, they are exclusive. You can't stack them. Yeah. So, the fact that he goes for a Ghost Scepter tells me that I think he might want to be a bit more aggressive with it. So, we'll, we'll see. In meantime, graph-wise, experience back in favor of Nuclear Gandhi going into the later portion of this game. And gold-wise, this is the one that I'm interested in. Finstack still maintaining a 14k gold lead, but it has taken a dip from what it was near 16k before. Well, I'd say take a dip, it's actually just got back up. But Nuclear Gandhi can still fight into this. and It doesn't feel like um, Finstack are that far ahead. They have the items, I'm sure. But in the fights, you've got Emma Whisper doing a good amount of work in terms of controlling this. You've got the, the uh, damage over time coming through from Utka, as well as the potential burst from Delhi and sustain from Hartwell. And uh, Trixie get, picks up a BKB. That's... An interesting choice. It's uh, going to help him against the potential of a uh, Mystic Flare. Going it really says that they want all. They've got all the three BKBs up now, and I think that's what they're looking for in order to uh, group up and push again. It is. It is. And now here we go. Either storm up as well as the Exorcism. They aren't going to have a very difficult time fighting into this one, but it has to be done. They're going to find the jump onto Trixie, but Trixie got his BKB off. Hartwell's in the mix as well, but in comes the boat. Is it going to connect on two? 
And Rexion have dominated screens, but now in comes the cleanup. They're going to be able to bring down the Venomans. He's going to immediately buy back. Emma Wisp is not having a fun time either. He's almost going to go down on the back lines. And Jerax going to be messed, messed around with Boga now. He's about back in the fight. But in comes the Soul Assumption. It's, uh, it's not Soul Assumption. The Soul Catcher onto Uka. He's going to take the Amplified Damage, of course. And Hartwell did have his borrowed time pop then, but they did lose Tier 3. Can they find the Rax off the back of this? Rex has slowed out. Look at the right click. Chipping away at the two Rax. They need to find some way to force back Finstack here. Otherwise, this is going to start to become an incredibly tall mountain to climb in terms of coming back into this game. The first racks down. They're going to lose their melee racks in a few seconds as well. In comes another boat. This is going to pretty much ensure the racks go down. It's going to connect on Dali as well. This could even be a kill here. And they're going to look for the, uh, the lasso. They're going to find it onto Tsukamuna. But... The Mystic Coil, the Mystic Flare was just a few uh, centimeters off. It didn't matter anyway. The Arcane Bolt was more than enough. And Fraggy, as well as Rexy, are both going to TP out. They don't want to overstay their welcome at all. And Uka, he flew everything to try to hold this one, including the ult. As soon as the ult was popped, you saw the TPs away. They didn't want to risk dying to the dot. And even in the fountain, just look how much damage this Venomancer ult is doing. <laughs> they were right to run. Scary as all hell. Yeah. And this is why it's so important to focus down Uka in these fights. Yeah, but I mean, that's that's what the BKB does as well. It forces the Venomancer to yeah, wait with his sure. ultimate. Indeed. It limits the Skyrat's... Well, the Skyrat doesn't do anything, really. Um, the Apothic Shield and the Mist Coil, they're reduced. It basically means that even though Emma Whisper has a great way to initiate on them, he's got the full gotta go fast build. The uh, Mask of Madness included. Like, he's, he's very, very, very capable of pulling them out of position, but once they're out of position, nothing Dyer's happens. It's just very true. Trixie was pulled straight out of position in that fight, but he got his BKB off, and he just stood around and went, hey, what up? <laughs> Pretty much, and then he could right click from inside the base. Yeah. The position, of course, granted by that Batrider. But equally, item-wise across the board, we do have the Boots of Travel available for Rexy on that Death Prophet now. And we did have the all-important Pipe of Insight picked up by Jerax. So they're going to be able to stand for at least a little bit under the effects of that Venomancer ult. However, the Venomancer ult with the Agonims still at level 3. That's a uh, hell of a lot of damage. I'm not going to do the math right now since we've picked up another fight. They're going to look to bring back Rexy, but they're not going to be able to bring him down in time. The BKB is there, but the boat connects on two. Jerax trying to right-click in this one. Meantime, Rexy with that Exosim is just going to shred these supports, shred this damage. Who are they going to go on now? Heartwall will be the victim, and he's just going to get shredded. He can't even TP out in time. There is far too much physical damage, and now you've got the Eye of the Storm as well. They're going to go into Smamus, and he's going to be forced back in this fight. Emma Whistler forced to run away and force stuff out. Dally could potentially get first down by these uh, ghosts here. All of them, they make connect, but no, the Ghost Set is going to make sure they don't. GG is called. We yeah. have our first grand finalist, ladies and gentlemen. Finstack will be advancing into the grand final today at about 4 o'clock. And unfortunately, we do lose uh, We do lose Nuclear Gandhi from the tournament. They played formidably, and it was a pleasure seeing them play today. Yeah, and also Jarak's picking up that pipe. He... I think he finished it just before that last fight. He finished it just fight. before that last yeah. fight, and that was the big thing. Uh, that, that that's, him. like, on top of those nine-second BKBs, it's just, there was nothing to, do, to be done there. Mm. BKB and pipe, it does far too much work. Yeah. But, ladies and gentlemen, we still have one more semi-final game for you today. We have VVV, Veni Vidivici. Veni Vidivici up against uh, Seppo13. Yeah, and that's in 40 minutes. Indeed, and uh, do you have any expectations going into that game, Sanzu? I, I think Venevidici VDG is pretty confident. I think they think they feel that Seppo is pretty unpredictable, though. So, I, I think it's going to be a lot about what strategy Seppo tries to go for, and um, Venevidici is going to be sort of. Trying to keep an eye and trying to outsmart them. Indeed. But on that note, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us for the first semi final, and we shall see you shortly for semi final number two in, I believe, 40 minutes. Yeah, 40 minutes. See you then.